Brittany, the town of Brumley owes its development to the industries of coal and iron. In 1801 it was part of the parish of Bidwatley with a population of no more than 619 persons. By 1851 the population of the area 22,413. The social development of Rumley is owed to its churches, its chapels and its public houses. E. E. Edwards in his book Echoes of Rumney tells us of the various names of the chapels and their developments. The church and parish of St. David's Anglican Church which delivered services in English and in Welsh. This video will cover the contribution of the independent Calvinist Wesleyan Methodist churches and chapels. Calvinistic Methodism came to the area of Rumney in 1766 when Howell Harris, the Welsh travelling preacher born in Trevecca near Talgraf, Breckenshire, came to the area to preach. He had been rejected by the Church of England because of his Methodist views from the teachings of John Wesley. So he brought Methodism to the Rumney area. John Wesley was an ordained Anglican cleric born June 28, 1703 died March the 2nd, 1791. He was a theologian and evangelist, and he led a revivalist movement called Methodism. In the independent, non-conformist churches and chapels, his counterpart, John Calvin, developed Luther's doctrine of Protestantism. He broke away from the Roman Catholic Church. He was a French theologian, Born July 10th, 1509, died May 27th, 1564. His work impacted on Congregational, Reform and Presbyterian churches. This video deals with the location and the date of building of the chapels and churches. We start with Zoa Independent Greig, built in 1839, followed by Ebenezer Calvinistic Methodist Chapel, originally built in 1807 but was relocated and rebuilt in 1846 and was known as Toyn Chapel. We then have Zion Independent Chapel, built in 1837-38, followed by Penwell Baptist, built in 1821. This was converted to a vestry with a new building in 1839. We have the building of Tabernacle Welsh Wesleyan Chapel, built in 1871. Mount Carmel Independent Chapel, not far from the Royal Arms Hotel, was built in the early 1900s, sometime after 1913. Goshen Independent Chapel was built in 1848. This was destroyed by fire in World War II. The English Methodists built a chapel at the south end of Ramsden Street at a place called the Yard Pit Row. This suffered subsidence and a new building was therefore erected on the north end of Ramsden Street in 1869. Calvary Evangelical Church, known as the Tin Chapel, was formerly the Victoria Calvinistic Methodists and it was built in the mid-1900s. We then have Emmanuel Methodist Chapel, which underwent a renewal in 1988. It was formerly a Salvation Army Hostel. Towards the southern end of Rumney, we have Beulah English Baptist, built in 1866. Opposite this, we had Bryn Hovred Calvinistic Methodist, built in 1861. This property was subsequently demolished. Jerusalem gave us Jerusalem Welsh Baptists, built in 1841. 
The church was rededicated in 1849. And finally, we have Moriah Independent, built in 1841. Chapels of Rumney were supported by the local population of iron workers, coal miners, their wives and children, those who came from afar, Ireland, Scotland and England, for employment, superseding the local rural worker by industrialization. At the earliest, the chapels initially supported the speaking and reading of Welsh. They provided biblical stories, moral lessons based on Christianity. But more so, they provided education. The chapels opened schools to teach reading and writing, simple arithmetic, history and geography and more. But beyond that education, they helped to form the social fabric of a community. Miners and iron workers were the lay preachers who provided leadership to their fellow men and women. Some went on to study further at higher education of schools and colleges of theology. In turn, they helped to improve the quality of daily life's dreariness and heavy toil. Tabernacle, Welsh Wesleyan, built in 1869. Each chapel followed its own creed. Calvinists, Methodists and Baptists and Independents. They had rules and set standards of community behaviour. They each worshipped a god in their own way. The established church, the Church of England, came to Rumney in the form of St. David's Church, followed by St. Matthew's and St. Mark's. They followed the thoughts of the hierarchy, the aristocrats and rules of the land. Ministers were well educated, many of middle class background and higher. They did not support the philosophy of the non-conformist chapels and churches. The established church was formed with the building of St. David's Parish Church in 1843 followed by St. Matthew's in 1880, St. Mark's in 1904. In Bootown, we had St. Aidan's, which was built circa 1838. The Roman Catholic Church built St. John's in 1861, and they rebuilt the property in 1966. We also had presence of the Salvation Army and the Latter-day Saints, but both were unsuccessful in establishing themselves in Rumley. Social events were organized to include most members of the chapel. Some provided sport and entertainment, singing and choral education, sight reading of music notation using the tonic alphabet of solfar. Amateur dramatics was used as a device to teach and entertain.
the chapels formed a political base. Individuals did not have party affiliations. They were forced to face class division. The poor against the rich, the worker against the landowner, the iron and coal masters, interested primarily in the profit from the mineral wealth of the land they owned at the cheapest labour cost. Children and parents worked in appalling conditions to feed and clothe themselves at a great risk of loss of life or permanent injury, loss of limb and abilities. Local communities of members built and supported their chapels. A small portion of income from the daily toil collectively provided the cash means to erect buildings, maintain them and employ and pay a few of their own ministers. But many members took responsibility as volunteers for no self-reward on earth, perhaps hoping for a reward in heaven. Each chapel in Rumney has its own story. Each should have its own record in history, in the memories of its people, of its communities and of its children. Somewhere the history should be recorded, appraised and learned from. Each chapel and its activities a reminder captured in a vignette. The Roman Catholic Church also found a place, even after 300 years of reaction from the time of King Henry VIII and the establishment formed by the introduction of the Church of England. Tolerance was given to allow open worship. This extended to other ministries born in the 1800s, the Latter-day Saints and the Salvation Army, each creed attempting to lead people toward what might have been more fulfilled life. Invariably, chapel communities failed, collapsed, membership dwindled, and unable to pay their way, closed down. Buildings were sold, demolished, and the land repurposed. Rumney has seen great change, physically and socially. What will the future bring?
this video captures a small segment of the chapels and churches of Rumney, the buildings and locations. It does not capture the human cost of following a faith based in its community.